essentially with electronic instruments and sound design for the song The Water Understands. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting challenge because it's uh, like a lot of the Nine Horses material. It's a through composed piece, but there's also a lot of room for improvisation. And then I think we also began to apply the, the lessons that we learned from What Our Understands to other tracks, other compositions on the record. So I think one place that that, uh, you know, I found that particularly interesting was there's a violin solo in the middle of Omega, of, of the title track. You know, comping is all about supporting and reacting to that lead voice. Um, so the task there was to, to find a, uh, an electronic sound, you know, a gesture, almost maybe a cinematic gesture, um, that nonetheless supported this improvised live uh, violin solo. I think I chained a couple synthesizers together, uh, but then rather than sequencing them, rather than programming them, I, I performed them uh, along with the, the existing um, violin solo. So we wound up with this thing that was kind of, you know, comping, responding to the violin solo, and yet, uh, you know, was created by, by electronic sounds and instruments. Uh, there was another part in Omega that involved a, a through composed uh, string break that was intended to sound like, you know, like a string section, like an orchestra, so to speak, um, but, but mangled in some way or another so that it didn't just sound like, like a chamber ensemble. And we tried a bunch of different ideas with this. We, we did a lot of experimentation. I think there was some discussion of um, uh, being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, the, the Beatles track on Sgt. Pepper's in which the Beatles had taken a bunch of tape loops and shredded them, thrown them up in the air, and then taped them back together. So there was sort of this like chaotic aleatoric thing. We took the string parts that were pre-recorded and bounced them over to cassette tape, just regular old you know, stick it in your Walkman cassette tape that, uh, of course, is pretty low fidelity and has um, has a lot of, you know, audible artifacts to it. And then I think we did a bunch of performances of the cassette tape in which um, Joe, this was in a, a Tascam four track recorder, and we played back the string recording, but Joe fiddled with the pitch and speed. So it sounded like a string performance that was just completely, you know, mangled, warped, some old, you know, not, not naturalistic in any way. And then we took those performances, we must have had five or six of them, with differing pitch and speed and wobble and all that stuff, and uh, dumped them back into Ableton, dumped them back into the computer, and set it up so that at random intervals, the computer would switch between those different pitch performances. And so it was almost a, a digital and digital sounding recreation of uh, what the Beatles did with being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, except because it was all the same source material, there was a melodic through line, uh, and yet it was still chopped up and jumping from one thing to another. One element that we kept coming back to was uh, early in the, in the track Omega, there was a uh, sort of a glitch percussion part meant to be very industrial, mechanical, um, little choppy, very clearly electronic bits uh, that I think we then um, had uh, Damien, the, the drummer, play along to and sort of like by those elements. Um, but any time that the Omega theme was this melodic motif that's happening underneath it or over it uh, comes back throughout the rest of the record, then this, this kind of choppy, glitchy, percussive element also comes back, but changed in some way or another, pitched or, or filtered or just uh, modulated in some way.